So let us start dancing. We have gotten the class object using the person.getClass method. Using this variable, we can access information on this class. So the first thing we want to get is what are the fields that are present in this class? That is the declared fields. To get those, I will say class obg, which represents the class object dot get declared fields. This will return all the declared fields in this class. We can loop through the fields because it returns an array of the field objects. So it's an array of type field. We can do a lot with the field type. But for now, let us just get the field name and the field type. So in each loop, we want to print out the name of the field and then the data type of the field. We can do field.type. Let us quickly check out the person class. So we have two fields here, name and age. Name is protected type and age is default. But forget about that. Just know we have name and age. When we run the program, you can see it printed out the name of the first field, which is name. And the type is string. The name of the second field is age of type int. This is an example of Java reflection. We are able to inspect this class and get information about the class during runtime. Now, we can even check if a field type is primitive. So for example, let's say we are looping through the fields and we only want to work with those that are primitive. We can say field.getType.isPrimitive. So for each primitive value or field, we should print out, hey, primitive here. We have just one primitive field, so that is why it is printed out once. Now, what if we just don't want to know if it's primitive? We want to know if it's of type int. We use the integer.type. This will help us compare and will be positive if the type is of type int. So because the type is of type int, you can see, hey, int here. Now, sometimes you might know the name of the field directly. You could call get declared field, not fields. So we want to get just one field. We can call get declared field. I'm passing the string which represents the name of that field. Now that we have the field variable, we can actually set the value of that field. The age field is an int, so we can set the value to something like 56. Now, you are supposed to handle the possible exceptions, but I am just doing a quick throws on the main method. So you could surround this with a try catch, and we can see that the person object now has age 56. When you want to set the value of a field, the first parameter represents the object on which you want to perform that operation. Now, if age had a default value of 7 
and I wanted to get it. All I will say is field.get. But if I say get, which object am I getting this value from? So I will specify it. I am getting it on this particular person object. There could be different person objects and I can call field.get, but field is just a field of a class. So I have to specify the object that I am going to perform this get operation on. So you can expect at runtime, this is beautiful and can be very useful in different situations.